What's up everybody? Welcome back to Flex Garage. We're on a nice sunny day here in Southeast Texas. We're going to be working on the golf cart. I've already been to the hardware store once, so I got that out of the way. We're going to be working on the electrical system. I keep blowing fuses whenever I run the headlights and the radio, so we're going to try to rectify that. Let's get started. So first things first, I want to give you guys a little rundown about what we're doing today. I don't think I was very detailed whenever I did the install for the amp and it in explaining how I got the trigger wire working to turn the amp on and off with the key switch. See, most golf carts have this key switch with off, on, and headlights. It's pretty self-explanatory. The headlight output turns on the headlights. This golf cart has a secondary switch for the headlights here. So even when the key is in the headlight position, the lights don't turn on until you pull this handle. So I used that to my advantage, and I wired the amp to the headlight output here so when I turn the key to headlights, it turns the amp on, and I can still use this switch to turn the headlights on and off when I need them. The problem that I'm now facing is every time I run the headlights and the radio at the same time, I blow the fuse that's related to the headlights. I went and looked, and this cart, even though it's a 2016 model, uses an older style glass fuse setup with a 15 amp fuse. And I guess the headlights are just at the edge of running 15 amps, so any additional power draw, even as small as the remote wire for an amp, is blowing that fuse. So today we're going to upgrade that to a more modern spade style fuse connection block, and we're going to upgrade it to a 20 amp fuse and see if that fixes our issue. So as you can see here, the carts used from the factory an older glass fuse style connection block. It's very basic, it's just paperback glass fuses. It's got three wires out, one wire in. We're going to replace that with the same fuse panel that I installed under the dash. It'll give me more expandability and it'll upgrade to more modern space style fuses that are easier to acquire if I blow one out. So we're going to have a look at what I've ordered and then we're going to get started. So this is a distribution panel I ordered. It does negative and positive but we're not going to use the negative end. We're just going to use the positive side. It's got six outputs, which is overkill, but it'll give me access to be able to expand later if I want to. Come with plenty of fuses. It's got a nice cover, some labels. I went to the hardware store and got the, the screws I'm going to need to bolt it in. It's just going into a plastic panel so they don't have to be super high end. I also have the schematic here that I downloaded. I'll put a picture of this where you guys can have a look at it better. But this will tell me which wires are which the orange one the red one the blue and white one so that I can label the fuse panel correctly and get everything going the way it needs to be so I'm going to get some tools together we're going to have to do some drilling to get that old one out because it's riveted in so we'll get set up and we'll get started on that all right so I've already disconnected the battery and I went ahead and removed the seat completely to give us more room to work this box here is just stuck on with adhesive, so I'm going to pull it out of the way. We will have to re-secure it later. The sticky on the back of it is shot. So I'm going to go ahead and get that moved. The next step is drilling out the two rivets that hold this panel on. This bottom one is going to be kind of hard to reach, but I'm going to do my best without having to pull the battery. Once we get that out, we can get a template set up to get the new panel installed. And hopefully this will go pretty smooth. Let's see what we got. All right, we got it loose. I'm gonna clean up in here a little bit, get a template built for the uh, new panel so that we can get the holes marked, and then we'll get that installed. All right, so I got some tape in here so we can do some marks. 
Um, my Sharpie's not gonna fit through these holes, so I'm not gonna be able to mark it that way. So I think what I wanna do is just hold this up there and use this punch to punch a divot. And then I'll get one bolt secured loosely, and then I can mark the other three. That way we don't have to worry about making a template or, or any of that process. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this marked, get the easy one that we can reach right here, get it mounted up, and then we'll do the others. got stainless hardware because even though we store this in the garage it's still going to be out running around on the streets and it's very humid where I live so I went ahead and opt for the stainless hardware so that we make sure there's no rust issues All right, so I got the one just hand tightened. That'll allow me to hold this thing in place and mark the other three. We'll get those drilled and then we'll get it mounted up. All right, all four holes are drilled. I'm gonna go ahead and get all the hardware mounted up. This is gonna take a little bit because this hardware is really tiny. You gotta be careful, I don't wanna lose any washers or anything. So bear with me while I get it all mounted up. All right, so I got everything installed. Now I'm gonna tighten it all up. We'll be able to start on the wiring. All right, everything's wired up. I'm gonna go ahead and put these tools away. We're going to switch over to electrical work. We've got to change out all of these spade connectors for loop connectors so we can install them on the uh, power panel. So I'm going to get everything cleaned up and we'll switch over and start working on that. All right, so I got my connectors handy. I got my pliers ready. I got a lighter to do the shrink wrap for the heat shrink. Doesn't really matter which is which at this moment. I'm just going to cut them all off put new ends on them, connect all three of them to the panel. And then we'll go back to our schematic we looked at earlier, figure out which is which so we can label them. Then we'll be able to power everything up and test it out. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started on it.
All right, we got all four of them crimped and shrunk down. I'm gonna let them cool for a second while I get proper tools to install. We'll be right back. All right, so I got some tools together. I'm gonna go ahead and get these terminals loosened up so we can get these installed. Should be pretty straightforward at this point. All right, so I went back to the schematic and I found some, some labels. They don't have headlight or tail light in the list, so I've got horn, rear lights for tail lights, running lights for headlights. I think that's self-explanatory enough that I won't get confused in the future. I'm gonna go ahead and put the fuses in. I've got two 15s for the other circuits and then a 120 amp for the headlights. I'm gonna get everything buttoned up, get the battery reconnected, and then we'll do some testing. I'm also going to reconnect this box. It had some Velcro on it, but I don't have any Velcro, so I'm just going to use some double-sided tape and reapply it to the fender liner in here. All right, so everything's buttoned up. Time to do a little testing. I'm going to go ahead and turn on the headlights. Headlights are working. Turn signals work. Hazard lights work. And I don't know how well you can see it, but brake lights work as well. So all everything that was running through that panel is now working again. Also have connectivity to the amp. So the amp is up. So the true test will be the next time we take it out for a ride with the headlights and the radio going. Um, from what I've read, a, a remote feed for an amp only pulls about a half an amp to an amp. Um, I don't know why it was blowing in the first place, but hopefully this resolves it. If it doesn't, we may have a, a connectivity issue somewhere. I do know that the rear turn signals on the cart act kind of weird. There may be a bad ground or something back there, so that may be the next avenue if this doesn't work. But um, I'm gonna check it out. But for now, this project's done. I'm going to go ahead and button everything up. Go ahead and put away all the tools. Get everything cleaned up. And go have some fun on the cart. You guys have a good day. Y'all rock on. Um, be sure to subscribe. That way you know whenever I add more videos. Um, I'm going to try to add them as, as quickly as possible. I do a lot of stuff out here, so um, hopefully I'll have some good content for you. I hope you enjoyed everything, and thank you all for watching. I just remembered I forgot to test the horn. That's the third circuit in that panel we just replaced. The previous owner put a kind of funny horn on here. It's one of the old school Uga horns. So I'm gonna fire it off real quick, show you guys what it sounds like. <laughs> That's fun.